Well, good morning and welcome to episode 11 of the Independent Agent Podcast. I am Justin and I am Jordan, actually. Justin's sitting across from me. Uh, this, you are this, on fire today. <laughs> this is actually our take two because we're like 10 minutes in and realized that there was no sound recording. So It took 10 minutes to mix the drink. We didn't even get to a question. Right. Okay. So now the drink is mixed. Um, Justin tried it. You can... The first time he gave a really terrible, awful look, but um, what we're drinking today is a Paloma, which is a couple parts of Blanco tequila. We did Casamigos here, uh, about a half a lime, some, you know, Perrier or club soda, whatever you got, and a little bit of grapefruit juice. So that's what the drink was. Why don't you tell the good people what you think? I just don't know if I'm a fan of the grapefruit in it. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not bad. I mean, if you just gave me the tequila, I'd be, be doing I can just do well. that. You yeah, just wanna, you just want to take a well, shot. Well, no, I've got my ultra here too. So, but I, you can just take a pull from the bottle. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right for now. Okay, I think it's pretty good. I'm. It's been a very long time since I've made again. A Cuoma, so. Not terrible. Not terrible. But like on a refreshing day, I'm going to go with my ultra. So, Justin, why don't you tell the the fine folks why i'm not formally dressed today yeah this is in honor of Ryder cup i'm representing team america every year uh, jordan uh, chooses to uh, set up a tournament for 24 of his closest and most time-honored friends and we go out and duke it out in the desert and a couple years uh, ago i went out there and uh, team usa started winning again <laughs> justin finally got the invite he was not one of my closest in time modern friends in the beginning so when did you come you're two or three two or three because when we were having some issues right totally and, yeah. and then we were, then we were like justin i'm going and doing this thing and then i was like i'm not going it was my 30th birthday and justin wouldn't come that makes it sound <laughs> terrible <laughs> but okay. i'm coming now all Good. right okay so question one we're gonna start off here I've been working in the insurance business for the past five years. Recently, an opportunity outside the industry came up that I'm interested in exploring. However, I'm fearful that if I leave our industry for a few years, I'll have to start over at the beginning. What are your thoughts on this? How difficult do you think it will be to get back in? Jordan? What is their role? Do we know? I think this is an account manager. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that difficult then. I mean, if you're any good, you know, um, okay, you've been, you've been in the business for five years, so you understand how to run a desk, assuming you're competent, um, up running, fully going, doing the whole thing. You can go out, but if you get too far out, if you get more than a couple of years out, you're going to forget everything and there will be, you know, some difficulty coming back in. Um, that said, we have an employee who's done just the same. You know, uh, she came back. She took quite a hiatus, actually, to be home with her kids. Um, she's doing a fantastic job, but there was really some time for her to get back up and going. You know, um, I would say producer. It's a terrible idea if you have a book. Like that's a, it's it's a horrible maybe unless you're not any good. But if you're any good, you're not wanting to get out. Yeah, right. So, how difficult is it? Eh, depends how long you take off and how good you are right now. Yeah, I think it also depends on the marketplace you serve, right? Um, if you're in an area uh, that's small town, it can be difficult because that job is filled and the, the opportunity doesn't come around for, let's say, that agency in your space. However, bigger areas like ours, we have tons of opportunity and obviously there is a massive shortage in our industry of qualified individuals. I will say ring rust is real when it comes to account managers. Ring rust? Okay. Ring rust is real. Okay. So when we Burr. talk about fights, right? Uh, a fighter who has had a significant layoff, getting back in, even though they remember what to do, they have to get acclimated again. And so um, I that, was just commenting on your alliteration, ring rust real. Okay. You just really didn't care what I had to say, but that's fine. Uh, what's new? Um, as far as the uh, the time to get back involved, um, you forget when you're not doing the day-to-day -day and dealing with 
the forms and dealing even specifically with the agency management system and that agency management system has been updated. It's just going to take some time and you're going to have to be patient with yourself as you go through that process. You're also going to get asked the question sometimes of, well, why did you go somewhere else and what's different now? And you need to be prepared to answer that question. I think most people are going to be just happy to have a competent person come back in, yeah. provided you are competent. Now, um, I, I think there's that. I think they will. They may check on a reference with the former employer, and maybe the reason you took a hiatus was because you were terrible, um, and we're hoping that this this time period off um, makes them forget. Yeah, like, which is probably not not, not not a bad play. Um, but even even now, I think that's it, it's it's really not as scary as you think. Um, if you're qualified, if you're competent, if you keep up with your license, that's I wouldn't let your license right, expire. Right, right. I'd make sure you do that. I'd stay brushed up just in case, um, and I don't think you'll have any any issues. Well, I would encourage you to really look into it too. I mean. Sounds so bad. If you're a producer and you've built up a book, it's because it's so hard to come back and rebuild a book. You know, I would say, hey, be careful. Because of the ease of this, like, if there's something else out there that's more fun, fills your passions, um, something new, like, I'd encourage you to check it out. It, you can come back into this industry. The industry is certainly not dying. Um, timing may be an issue, though. You know, one one thing to think about whenever you're moving from place to place is, let's say you move, let's say you're at five years and you're not a senior person. Let's say you're a, a middle of the road in terms of tenure at the agency. You leave, go somewhere else, either to some other agency or rather some other industry. Now you're starting at the beginning. Recession hits. Who do they cut? They cut the the, the people at the bottom, right? The people with the least amount of experience. And so you're going to put yourself into that risk and then trying to come back into the agency in that world, that's going to be very difficult. Or worse yet, you realize the other opportunity didn't work for you. You come back, you get hired, and now the recession hits when you're at the new agency. And again, you're not the tenured employee there, right? right? So um, there's a small amount of risk. Um, Again, we will have another recession. It will come sooner rather than later. Uh, But... If you're really unhappy, that's not what, a way to live. And if, no. if you have another opportunity that provides that for you, if you're a smart, capable person, you'll get back on your feet. And there's other good industries. I mean, none as strong as this one, but there are those that are out there. So, question two. Yes. I am new to the What's with these new to the Well, I guess the other person was in five years. just seems new to me. I am new to the industry, but I really want to maximize my long-term opportunity in insurance. If you were starting over in the industry today, what steps would you take to be successful within the first 12 months? So let's talk as an account manager, right? Coming into, well, you may start a CSR account assistant, um, something along those lines. The first thing I would be doing would be forming relationships, and making sure that even within my own agency, I'm going to make myself another cocktail. That was pretty good. Go for it. Within the agency that I would have a full understanding of what the specific roles are, understanding how they impact me, how they impact the customer and how they, you know, impact the agency overall. What's the power structure within the agency, right? It is often times uh, the loudest person that usually wants to take you around, but they're not necessarily the best influence. You need to understand a dynamic within your own office. Past that, it's you need to be willing to learn everything you can. And what happens in most cases that I've seen is that first 90 days, especially if you're new to the industry, rightly or wrongly, you're going to be judged. And they're going to see what you're willing to do in the very beginning, and that sets the tone for their expectation of you going forward and potentially what your career ceiling looks like. So I would say the willingness to utilize whatever educational resources are at your disposal to use, but to also ask the right questions so that you fully understand what you're doing, but then you don't stop there. You go and ask 
others, what other things do I need to know that don't directly relate to me now, but that I need to know if I ever want to move up within this organization? And starting with questions like that. So I guess the key word was to be a constant learner and networker. And if you are more introverted like myself, that's a growth area you've got to work through. Um, but that is something nonetheless that I think you need to spend time doing. The only other thing I would say is to really go and find out about uh, the various industries your agency may serve. I think understanding what you like to deal with um, and finding out stuff that naturally piques your curiosity, you will excel in that area. So sometimes you start off and you're working for one department and you're cutting your teeth and you're learning, but because you never looked outside of like in our agency construction and you never looked into uh, retail or uh, you know healthcare, et cetera, you just don't have that exposure. So you don't know if you'd even like that. So I would just be tasting a lot in a lot of different areas. Jordan, thoughts? Yeah, I'll speak on a producer side. Uh I would say I 70% did this before. I, w I wish I would have known a little bit more the reality of, of how it would play out. But, you know, we were, Justin and I were fortunate that, you know, we had an existing kind of agency and, and some family backing, et cetera. Um, I would say as a producer, plan to spend the next five years, if you're just coming in, working 60 hours a week, and grinding the heck out of everything. Um, and part of that grind is actually fun because it, what what we did poorly is we didn't actually go do the social thing to meet and network all the, to, to find different clients. That was uh, your job. I, it was my job. Um, but we built the email marketing system yeah. that was so effective while I was doing it. So I had just all this incoming you know, opportunity. But here's the reality in five years i mean well let's i don't know about every every state is different in california in five years if you grind you should be at no less than you know a three-quarter million dollar book of business right for five years you know you do well you, sh you should be able to get up to about a million dollar book of business depending on what agency you're at and what the commission splits are at you're making a few hundred thousand dollars uh, a year and you can start your year going, if I don't sell a single thing, this is my base, right? But that takes a while to build up. The money in this business is incredible as a producer if you're willing to put the effort in and actually selling and closing is a lot harder than people think it is. Um, but I would say grind, grind, grind for five years. Tell if you're single, you don't have an excuse. If you're, if you're married, let your spouse know, hey, this is what we got to do for five years so that we can live this other kind of life. It's going to be probably even more difficult if you have kids um, because kids take up time and they've got sports and games and all those things. But I would say work your butt off for five years so you can get the payoff. Uh, but, you know, you brought up a good point. Like, we didn't do the whole networking thing, and I wonder how much bigger our book could have been. Mm -hmm. Like, I have one account that I met sitting at a sushi restaurant and it's my largest account by like five times. And it's one of the very few times that I've actually done like the social networky thing to, I will pay for you to do more sushi nights out. It was, it was a good sushi dinner. It was a really good, someday we'll tell that story, but it was, uh, it, it's, it's a significant account. Um, and it came out of nowhere, but if I were intentionally out, looking for opportunities like that, going to bars, going to restaurants, doing things like that. I think I would have been far better off. So that's my advice. Yeah, the only thing I would say on the producer side is uh, to be successful, I think you've got to know the process well enough. You need to know how the underwriters are making decisions. So if you're new, instead of just the handshake agreement, you know, trying to get business that way, I think you want to be armed with understanding the whole process, invest in that, meet with your underwriters, get an understanding of what types of risks they really are looking at. And then again, same, same rules apply with the account manager. Go and, and spend that time building your networking base, 
provide value, value, value to all those around you. And don't expect anything for the first 24 to 36 months. Just be that person who provides value because you don't have experience. So what you have is time, energy, and the ability to connect others. And that is where I would spend my time. Be smart enough within your space to be able to point out problems in others' work. Be smart enough in your space to know what are the key points to leverage the underwriters to get the pricing you need. And be open enough with your schedule that you're going to say yes to all these opportunities that require time after hours going to events. Again, that's painful for somebody like me. I'd rather just, if I'm in a if I'm in a building and everyone's meeting and networking, I'm going to sit in the corner and have a glass of wine and that's where I'll, I'll be. So that's a, a challenge for somebody like me. And nonetheless, I had to do some of that. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously it's difficult for your personality. Mm -hmm. And I think for a long time, you just kind of sat on that and was like, it's not really my deal. I would say that you forced yourself to really dig into that the past few years and really be more social and in that element. Don't you, don't you think? Yeah, I guess well, let's talk about the social anxiety component just because, um, I think it's, it's relevant. So one, I got to be a producer when the test said you shouldn't be a producer and that's because of who my father was. So I didn't, you know, it, the, the nepotism played out, and that's how I got my opportunity. I was all, already used to selling um, with shipping supplies and doing that, but, like, that, I'm not a real sales guy by nature. That's not who I am. And as my brother can attest, my social anxiety was so bad that I couldn't ask a waitress for a drink in high school. True. I told this story the other day, and maybe it's a little off track, but it's still funny. I remember being at a movie theater. And I spilled my drink walking to the theater and we're all together. And my dad says, go back, talk to them. They'll refill your drink and, and we'll go sit in the theater. And I was so afraid of the conflict that I made excuses that I had wasted their dollars. It was my mistake. I would own it. It shouldn't be on them to replace my drink because I spilled it for the three cents. Yes. Yeah. yes <laughs> that they, they spent. And and so for me, a lot of this was I had to be out there over and over again. Uh, same thing with public speaking. I had to go and do and do and do until it, it, it didn't hurt so much. So um, if you're like that, you can still be successful. Um, I was the youngest person ever at my, my company to reach their century club. Um, and I was the most introverted you could be. So... Um, you know, you can do it. It's more difficult, but you're going to have to push through that and be be more comfortable. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I would spend my time. Cool. I think that's everything. Uh, not quite. Okay. So, couple things. We love the questions we're getting. We want more of them. Yes. So, because it's too much work to set up yet another email address. If you have an anonymous question you want us to, to go and address on here, email me at justin at totalcsr.com. And as long as we can find a way to fit it in, we will definitely try and add that question to our pipeline and answering it. Um, the other thing, our podcast, like it, subscribe to it. Please, please, please like it, subscribe, comment, say how handsome Justin looks today. Or suggest what drinks that Jordan yeah, should throw my way. If you want to email me yeah. for a, a drink, Jordan at Total CSR. It's Jordan with an A at TotalCSR.com. Perfect. So with that, we bid thee farewell. Cheers. Cheers.